Hi, and welcome back to another episode of JPlay. I'm Marcus, and I have to admit, it's been quite a while. I'm still alive, and I really do apologize for my long silence, but I had to do some other appointments in the past, and I was also waiting for Essen 2013, which I attended for, unfortunately, only one day. But still, as you can see, the pile to the right of me is relatively big. I think it's not completely Essen. I think one or two of them are also some Kickstarter pledges I received or rewards I received, like this 12 Realms here. But most of it is definitely Essen. So this was definitely a very heavy package I had to carry through the train. Fortunately, I was there with the train. I think when I would take a plane or something like that, I definitely had to pay for the extra luggage here. Um, I think this will take me some time to go through this pile. Uh, some of these games are not very new, so like this Robinson Crusoe here, for example, I have the expansion for the Beagle. Um, I have this Vikings here on the bottom, it's Amerigo, I think you don't see that here. One very nice little cool game is this Luchador here, some uh, Mexican wrestling dice, very cool filler game. Um, the Stronghold Undead expansion, also something I was going for for quite some time and some of you might remember my playthrough of the base game of Stronghold, so this might be a candidate for another playthrough. But today I want to focus on Mount Everest and yes, yeah, some of you might already seen this. This is some, call it Descendant of K2. Uh, it's also possible to mix some of the components as far as I read from the uh, rules here. So you can take the game board from Mount Everest and play with K2. There are some victory points printed on the Mount Everest game board here that you don't use when you play with the core rules of Mount Everest and such. So this is definitely interesting for those guys who already own a copy of K2. But fortunately, this is also something for someone like me who doesn't own K2 and I was really keen to get my hands on this one here so really this was some one of my high priority items for Essen this year and luckily the guys the nice guys from Rebel provided me this reviewers copy here so this made me even more happy I have to admit as usual, I will open the box, I will show you some of the components, I think I will explain you some of the core rules, but as I'm planning to do a uh, playthrough learning session for Mount Everest, I think I won't spend too much time for explaining the rules, we will learn the, the game as we play. Yeah, and I think that leaves it for today. I Hopefully you are looking forward to the playthrough learning session of Mount Everest, I certainly do. This is the main game board of Mount Everest. It's come in two sided, so there is an easier variant and there is a heavier va variant. I hope and I believe this should be the easy variant and that's definitely something that's ideal for someone like myself who's actually learning this game. There are two sets of winter and summer cards, so these are more or less weather cards and also the summer side or the summer tiles are definitely the easier ones and so again this will definitely be my choice. Each player has to guide um, game boards basically. They're more or less the same of course they're differing in respect to the miniature they're using so this would be for example the miniature for or the pawn for this guide and there will also be a pawn for the other guide. The image is slightly different but apart from that they all have the same abilities. Each player has two of these camp tokens which he or she can use during the game. Once they are placed they will stay where they are. Of course they can also be dropped from the game so if you don't want to carry them any longer but then they are gone. There are two sets of tokens for the actual clients, so the purple ones are climbers, they only bring you two victory points when you bring them to the summit and also two victory points when you bring them back safely to the base camp. And then you have the tourists, the yellow ones, who bring you three victory points when you bring them to the summit and also three victory points when you um, return them safely to the base camp. Note. If some of these climbers or tourists are going to die, they will cost you victory points plus one that's printed on them. So whenever a tourist is going to die, you will lose four victory points. 
These are the tokens for the oxygen and can be used for helping your customers to acclimatize to the hot weather conditions at Mount Everest. These are the icefall tokens. They will be shuffled and then they are laid out at random at these icefall spaces here. Of course, this will be no one will see what's beneath them. So whenever a guide will move to one of these ice fall, this will be turned and then something happens. For example, the movement could be hard, it could be easier to move through this ice fall or it could be also impassable. When playing with a tougher version of the game, the ice fall is bigger and you also get this pile of ice fall tokens with the number one. They show more or less the same, though this is for example a token that um, means that uh, movement through this field costs you two movement points instead of only one and so on. But as I'm playing with the easy variant, we will only see ice fall tokens with a number two on the back. Last but not least, each player has two decks of cards. So there's one main deck with cards and there are also a deck of six cards which hold acclimatization cards which will allow you later on in the game to acclimatize your clients to the hard weather conditions and this goes hand in hand with the oxygen tokens I showed to you earlier. I nearly forgot to mention these wrist tokens here. So there is a good set of wrist tokens. They show the number zero to two and they are being given to the player who has played out the biggest amount of movement points. And this player has to take one of these three wrist tokens that will be revealed once one is uh, taken from the offering here and then this player has to deal with these risk tokens. So for example, if a player played out three movement points and he would have this risk token, then he would lose, for example, one movement point. But this is definitely something I will explain to you in more detail when we come to the situation. All players start with five victory points. This is necessary because you can lose victory points relatively easy in this game, I believe. And it's also not unimportant in which order these figures are on the game board because this will be later on used as a tiebreaker. When you set up the board, this will be done at random. So this can already be an advantage for someone who will start at the very left position, but later on as the victory points progresses. Uh, so whenever you enter a new space, for example, this point here, then you would put your figure to the left side oops, of the game board. And uh, in the case of a tie, the red player would win the game. All the guides start at the base camp. As I mentioned, each player starts with two of these guides. So we, I'm playing with the red and the blue player here. The oxygen tokens, the client tokens, so the climbers and the tourists are being prepared so that each player can reach them. Each player gets his set of cards. So these are the six acclimatization cards and his main deck. Each player draws himself six cards. So this is his starting hand. Then we will prepare the weather deck and the weather deck consists of six cards each and we will have um, two presented with the front side showing. So we have one on the left side and one of the right side below this um, card here. There are the remaining weather cards. Each of these spaces represent one day and show some weather conditions. For example, here nothing does happen. This is bad weather. So you have to um, lose some acclimatization points already. Here's the same and so on. But I, I explain this mechanism as I play. It's also already only important to know that these decks represent 18 days and once we have played the last day, those are the 18th day, the game ends and whoever has the most victory points, so brought customers to or clients to the summit and back to the base camp wins the game. Let's put the weather tracker on this very first day here, which seems to be a very clear and sunny, nice little day at Mount Everest. I decided that blue will be the starting player. So the blue deck is on top of this um, deck here and he's getting the starting player token. The starting player goes around the table with each consecutive round. 
and then we are good to go and we can start our very first round. The sequence of play is um, or consists of five phases. The first phase would be the card selection. So as you might remember, each player has six cards or drawn six cards during the setup. So this is the starting hand for the blue player. And the blue player now has to select um, three cards or each player has to select three cards. And I think I will go with these three movement cards here. So this is a movement card worth three victory, um, three movement points, two movement points, and also two movement points. This is a special card. This is one with also three uh, movement points, but also this costs you one acclimatization point. So this is something you should use carefully. This is the starting hand for the red player. And I think the red will go for these three cards. So these cards with two movement points each. He has also got this um, rope card, so you can use the rope for two movement points up or three movement points down. It's also important to mention that whenever you want to use oxygen, then you have to do that at the very start of this very first phase. But as no one has any oxygen on the board, this is not really necessary. The next um, step during this first phase would be to reveal these cards. So these are the three cards for the red player. These are the three cards for the blue player. And you didn't see that. So again, here are the red player's cards and here are the blue player's cards. The next thing that would happen is to summarize the movement points for both players. So red has six movement points, blue has seven movement points. So during phase two, this would be the risk tokens phase. The player with the most movement points would have to choose one of these revealed risk tokens. And of course, the blue player will go for this risk token with the level one. Another new token is revealed immediately and bad luck. So the next player can choose this zero token, which doesn't cost him anything at all. But during this turn, the blue player has to live with this additional risk token. Then we come to the action phase. Now, it's important who the starting player is because the starting player has to do his actions first. As you know, all of these players have three um, cards in their hand which they can play. But um, beside playing these movement cards, each player can also equip the guides. And as long as they are all in the base camp, the, let's say, offering is more or less unlimited. So there is more or less unlimited pile amount of clients and oxygen. Of course, when the tokens are out, then there are no more tokens left. But I think that's not a problem, at least not in a two player game. And my plan was that the blue player or one of the guide from the blue player would equip a tent or a camp and also an oxygen. And here is how that works. So you see here there is this blue little line. Here's a blue little line. There's another blue little line. So you can of course equip these guides um, not indefinitely. And this is really dependent on what you want to carry. For example, if the blue guide here wants to take this tent here on his back then both of or all of these rows here are already uh, equipped so you see that here by this little blue line so he cannot put any more oxygen into this or this and he cannot put any additional clients to this guide here so the only row that is left would be the very last row here below and then he could either take one oxygen tank or one client to this guy. And I, I wanted to prepare the summit for the later stage. I want to go with an additional um, oxygen here. So I will equip the last row with this oxygen token. So this guide is now fully equipped. As I'm planning to only um, send the one guide to the summit or closer to the summit, I don't think I will use the second guide here at this point in time. So equipping these guys it with um, oxygen, tents or customers at the base camp is more or less a free action. 
Next thing that happens in the action phase is then I would play the movement or action cards. So we have to keep in mind we have this one risk token here. You can use the risk token either for reducing one movement point or you could also um, let's say spend one acclimatization point for each client that this guide is yeah, guiding to, to the summit. At this point in time I cannot spend this point for acclimatization because I don't have any clients so I have have to lose one uh, movement point so I will assign these movement cards I um, chosen so these are seven points worth of movement I have to subtract here one risk token so this guy can move six spaces and as long as you don't see any um, yellow circles with the number two in it for example each of these space costs one movement point here so let's see this this is this guide here so i will move him one two and three i will flip this tile here so this is now already a problem so this costs an additional movement point so this is not three i have to spend an additional movement point so i have already spent now four i will go to the next um, step here which is five and this is impassable, oh this is already bad luck, so I have to go back here. I'm still at five movement points, so I could say go to this um, ice fall tile here, flip it around. And this is also um, some very tough uh, terrain, so this would cost me an additional um, point. So this was six, I only have six movement points, so I have to stay here where I am and this is already something though basically I lost my very first turn so going first is not always a very good idea as you can see. The red player will now also equip his very first guide here and I think he will also go for a camp but he will decide to take a customer with him instead of the oxygen so we will put one client here at the very row so I cannot take any oxygen now and you can freely select which kind of client you want to have so you can go for the tourist which bring you more victory points but is a slightly worse climber than the actual climber and it's also important to know that these tokens are two-sided so this side shows that this client has not been to the summit when you flip this around then you see this icon here and this shows this client was already at the summit the second guide will take four clients with him so we will take two of these more experienced climbers and two of those tourists here now he's also fully equipped so he cannot take any camp or oxygen with him so i think this climber here or this guide here will use this two points worth of movement and he will move one, two spaces closer to the ice fall. The next thing that he will do, he will drop off his camp tile. And on this camp tile, he's now also allowed to drop off the, his tourists, basically, or his clients. And you would put them on the spaces according to their climatization level. So one, currently, they are all on level one. So I would put this client on this side but as you can see this little blue icon here shows that during the acclimatization level or phase at the very end of the of the round he would gain one level of acclimatization so this is definitely not too bad i think he will also go for this second movement card so two additional movement points here so with one, he will move here into the ice fall. This is very lucky for him. So this shows you can move more or less freely onward. So he still has one more movement point to go. And I think with a second movement point, he will go to this ice fall trap here. And this is also a tough terrain. So he cannot go there as he has only one movement point left. So he has to stay on this tile here. So it's now everything about this one here that shows if this is a tough terrain or an easy terrain. We still have the second guide for the red player. He will use the last movement card here with his two uh, four clients 
and he will also move one two spaces ahead and there he will also drop off his four clients he has now already five clients on this camp tile here and this already ends the action phase of this very first round so we come now to phase number four which would be the acclimatization step for once we have to check the weather conditions here and as you can see the weather is just fine so we will don't suffer any penalties here then we check for the acclimatization for these clients. The only clients that are currently out on the board are these five clients from the red player. He's on a blue field, so all of these clients would gain one level of acclimatization. And there is also a difference in how well they can acclimatize to the weather conditions. So the climbers, so the purple, better trained um, clients here can move up to four of these levels whereas the tourists can only go to level three. The action cards will be discarded. The starting player token will move to the red player. We will move the day track one day further though at this day we have really some problems to, uh, between the heights 6,000 to 8,000 so any customer out there in these heights would lose two levels of acclimatization, so that's definitely a problem. Each player now draws three additional cards so that they have six cards again to choose from. When there are no more cards left in the main deck, then they have to live with three cards they have left from the former round. And only when there is basically no more cards in hand, then they would be allowed to reshuffle the main deck and draw six cards again. And then the next round would start, so we would have the card selection, we would take a risk token for the player who has the most movement points, then we would have the action phase and another acclimatization level. I think I will end my playthrough for today, so I wanted to show you some of the components, I wanted to show you the very first round. Please be patient with me, I'm also learning this game as I preparing this video so if I make any mistakes don't be mad at me just make me aware and I will try to correct them. So I also don't have any clue if I'm playing this right in respect to strategy or tactics so I'm just playing around and exper experimenting a little bit so I think some of you will screen, to uh, screen towards your computer screen or monitor or TV Hi, how stupid you are and so on but yeah I think I will have to live with that if you feel you have to can give me some tactical or strategic advice please do so and let me know and I will try to improve improve my gameplay I hope I will see you all during my next episode of my playthrough of Mount Everest yeah and until then bye bye